I knew something was off when I saw my new team member doing everybody else's tasks, tasks which weren't hers. Instead of showing someone how to do something, she was just stepping in and doing it for them, hoping that they would like her for it in return. But the more I watched, the more I could see the damage it was causing, the damage to her confidence, the damage to the team's growth, and the damage to her career ultimately as well. And that's when I saw it, her need to be liked was holding everyone back, herself included. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm Jin Churchill, and I'm on a mission to help women grow in self-confidence so they can take their career to the next level. If you have a question or comment, please leave them down below. I'll always get back to you. A thumbs up is always appreciated. And of course, for more like this, please subscribe to the channel. When I first noticed my new team member was taking on everybody else's tasks like this, I started to question why. It didn't take me long to realise that she was motivated by a deep desire to be liked. In her eyes, stepping in that way demonstrated dedication, helpfulness and team spirit, all good qualities that she hoped would earn her the camaraderie of the team. But beneath that desire to help was actually fear, fear of conflict and fear of rejection. She believed that saying no would label her as lazy or uncooperative rather than actually boundary setting, which is what she needed to be doing. She was new to the team and eager to be accepted, so the thought of pushing back frightened her. Adding to that, I sensed a little bit of self-doubt about her own abilities. So rather than owning her own role, she was hoping that doing everybody else's role for her would mask any lack of ability on her part, which she didn't have, by the way, she's a very capable person. In other words, she was trying to validate her worth. So at first, her extra effort seemed helpful, but as the weeks went on, it was becoming more and more clear that there were consequences to these actions. Her confidence began to suffer. By constantly focusing on other people's tasks, she was sending herself a subliminal message that her role wasn't enough. The more she helped, the less she believed in her own unique strengths. And that meant she got further and further away from developing the skills in her actual job and the confidence in those skills. The second consequence was that the team's growth started to stall. Second nature, that when you've got somebody who will step in and do something for you, you step back and kind of let them. It becomes not worth you doing it if somebody else is gonna stride in and do it anyway. Instead of learning and growing, they were effectively letting her step in and do everything for them. They were leaning on her for all of the answers and effectively transferring their responsibilities onto her. This dependency meant the team's growth was stagnated. Nobody was growing, including the girl in question. And this behaviour limited her career progression. In her efforts to please, she was sacrificing really valuable time that she should have been spending on her core responsibilities so that we could see how well she was doing in the things that were actually important for that role. And when you're labelled as a helper, you're not labelled as a leader or a strategic thinker. And that's what was happening with her. And whilst we all have this inner desire to be labelled as helpful, it can actually prevent you from showcasing your talents and showing that you're actually you're eager for progression. So we got heads together to work out what we could do about this behaviour and the things that were causing it in the background. So we first of all had a very open discussion about setting boundaries and I tried to explain to her that it's not just okay to sometimes say no, it's absolutely essential to sometimes say no. If it's not serving you and what you need, you need to say no. It doesn't have to be in a horrible way, but you do have to set those boundaries. Without boundaries, you can be stretching yourself too thin to try and create a world where you're doing your own role and other things for other people as well. It just leads to burnout. So we agreed specific areas where she could contribute and help and others where she was to let her colleagues do their own thing. If someone didn't know how to do something, by the way, 
the best thing to do is to show them how to do it so next time they can do it for themselves. That way everybody is growing and learning. I call this the teach, don't do. In other words, empower somebody else to be able to do things and you're imparting knowledge that's great for you, great for them. Everybody is achieving something new out of it. And finally, we talked about finding her confidence from inside rather than looking for validation from external sources from other people. By valuing her own expertise, she was able to fully step up for the role that she was intended for in a really authentic way without worrying about winning other people over all of the time. I shared how stepping away from people pleasing had been essentially my career growth. Genuine respect and connection comes from authenticity from nowhere else. So by helping her shift her mindset, she's now more focused on her role, more confident in her capabilities, and most importantly, genuinely be able to connect with the team. In her desire to be liked, she'd unwittingly set up roadblocks for herself and for the entire team. But by learning to prioritise her own role and foster her own strengths, she's finally embracing her true potential. Saying no can be the most empowering yes that we say to ourselves. If you have felt overstretched by people pleasing or struggled to hold firm to your true priorities, my boundary setting workbook is for you. Discover the empowering art of setting boundaries to strike the perfect balance between work, life and your well-being. It's an interactive workbook and there's a link to it right below this video. So go ahead and download that now. It's completely free. As ever, I really appreciate your feedback. It helps me to bring the stuff you're looking for, but it helps other people to find my stuff as well. So please leave any questions or comments down below. A thumbs up is always appreciated. And of course, for more like this, please subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, remember you're amazing. Go and download the Boundary Setting Workbook and you have an amazing week.